Welcome to the Oxbridge Formula. My name is Mark and today we're speaking to Amy about studying computer science at Cambridge. So Amy, could you start by telling us how you chose computer science as a degree subject? Yeah, so I chose computer science because it was the subject in school which I found most fun, most exciting, um, something that I could really just see myself doing um, as a career. Um, because I enjoy technology, I enjoy problem solving, thinking outside the box and um, I enjoy maths as well which helps a lot when it comes to computer science. So studying it at GCSE probably about the age of 15, 16 is when I really decided that computer science was something I wanted to study. Um, so I took it at A level from there and I ended up going to Cambridge with it which is really exciting. Yeah, definitely. And so why did you choose to do computer science over just maths? Um, for me, it's all about the application. Um, so computer science and maths, sure, there's probably a lot where they, they overlap. And at uni, computer science has started as a very theoretical um, degree with a lot of the, the courses that we have to take. But over time, I see myself going into something quite practical. Um, and I just, I guess I enjoy it more um, than I enjoyed maths, even though there is a lot of maths yeah, yeah. involved aspect that really excites me. Great. Um, so why did you choose computer science at Cambridge as opposed to at Oxford? So I chose Cambridge for a very um, not academic reason. I, I live quite close to Cambridge. I, I've grown up going to Cambridge to go shopping, like with friends. It's a place that I knew. Um, and going there the weekends and seeing, seeing the buildings and it's, it's just it's beautiful. And having seen it, I've grown up wanting to, wanting to go there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so once you decided that, you then had to put in your UCAS application. Um, and what else did you have to do to apply? So along with the UCAS application, we have um, we had a CSAT, which I know is no longer a thing. So people in this video probably uh, will not have to concern themselves with that and I had uh, one interview um, I know a lot of people had more than one interview but that that depends entirely on the college but I know that the the CSAT was uh, university wide yeah uh, and it's now been replaced with the uh, computer the Cambridge test of mathematics for university admission. Um, but I gather that they're probably relatively similar in terms of what you're asked to do. So do you have any advice for applicants about how to approach an admissions test? You probably... We good? Yeah, I think so. Just carry on. <laughs> I honestly don't know how well this recording is going to work, but we'll just keep going. Okay, cool. So my advice would be to anyone doing an admissions test is to, to practice questions. And I think when I did it, the questions that we were told they were comparable to like, like questions you get in a math challenge or Olympiad. And just to, a lot of those questions are online. Practice as much as you can. I at first found a lot of the questions were completely unapproachable. I'd never done anything similar before, but I just kind of stuck at it and I could see slow, gradual improvement and just just keep practicing, stick at it. And what was your interview like? My interview was, um, there was no personal questions, nothing on my personal statement. I'm not saying that's a, a blanket thing for every college. Um, just I go to Churchill um, so there was no no personal questions there were two questions which were problem solving questions for more information on Oxbridge colleges subjects and to get help with the application process visit oxbridgeformula.co.uk 
click subscribe and ring the notification icon to be notified when we release new content. Um, and they're very tiered questions. So it starts off with something that everyone can probably answer just to get you, get you settled in. And then they gradually get harder and there will be a point where you cannot answer it. And you're meant to get to a point where, where you're stuck. And that's kind of where they're trying to see how you think, see how you can take, trip you up. They're just trying to see how you, how you think. And after you had your interview, did you go out there feeling confident you get a place or did you think you went quite badly? Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've spoken to anyone who said they came out their interview and thought it went well. I think yeah. because they take you to a place where you get stuck, if you get stuck, it's probably good because mm. it means you've got to the harder part. But then if you get stuck, you think it didn't go well. So I, I don't even know if there's a way to tell if you come out an interview, whether it's gone well or not. So don't stress yourself coming out your interview, trying to think about how it went because who like, you won't know. Mm, exactly, and, <laughs> and they always want to. Not thinking it was an absolute mess, and yeah, I was going to say they always want to see how how far you can go. So you're almost definitely going to be asked something you don't know, just so they can find out what you do and don't know. Uh, your, your audio cut out there, I didn't hear what you said, sorry. Yes, I think in an interview, you're always going, they're always going to challenge you to find out what you don't know. Um, so you're almost inevitably going to come Definitely, to a stage where yeah. you get stuck, just so they can see. Yeah, and I don't think it's even to see what you don't know. It's to see to a point where mm. you, you're not thinking, because they never expect you to know it. They expect you to try and think and figure a way out. Like prior knowledge can help, but say you don't know what the question's based on, that's not the end of the world. It's not to see what you know, it's to see how you think. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, you've got your offer and now you're studying at Cambridge. So what does the yeah. course involve? Um, and what's your typical day like studying computer science? So my typical day, pre-COVID was um, lectures in the morning. So we have 9 a.m. lectures, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and 11 a.m. Oh, and 11 a.m. on Tuesday, Thursday. And then the other days we start at 10 and it's two lectures a day in the first year, or well, it was for me. I can't say that will be the same thing. And then in the afternoon we have like practical labs, um, where we did digital digital electronics practicals um and we also throughout we have something called ticks which are like coursework ish um you have a task to do you have a date to hand it in and you have to take that to the computer lab and they will basically just say yeah tick it that's <laughs> why it's called All right. tick. um so that's basically what it's all made up of, lectures, practicals and ticks. So what, what type of thing are you doing for a tick? Is it like a programming task? Yeah, so they're always applied to a particular course that you're taking. So when I was doing the graphics course, we had to do a ray tracer and it's, it's like extend an existing ray tracer and not make the whole thing. Um, and then once we've done that, we're given a specific time and we take it to them and they check it works. And if it works, you get the tick. Okay. So you mentioned that you have um, a lecture on a Saturday, which to me sounds really yes. terrible. But um, what is that like? Do you, is it something yeah. you get used to? Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, personally, I do always go out on a Friday night. So not every Friday, most Fridays. So it can be quite tough. Um, but it's it's okay. You do get used to it. 
I think the concept of a weekend fades quite quickly and you could have it worse because if you do natural sciences that as well so old, but who knows anymore yeah uh, so yeah you have quite a lot of lectures certainly compared to some other subjects so how do you find the work-life balance um it definitely edges more towards work um and you're told like if you go to Cambridge there'll be a lot of work or uh, Cambridge or Oxford and I can certainly say it's true um I do find a lot of time to chill and have fun it's not all work I think it probably depends on the college quite a lot so I have oh I've got Google I accidentally activated Google um so I think it depends quite a lot on the college um so we've got a great college atmosphere I'm sure it's the same everywhere so in the evenings it's very easy just to find a group of people and do something and there's there's always plenty to do yeah and have you found the time to get involved with societies and stuff like that yeah so I am part of the Cambridge University kickboxing society um which is something I'd never I'd never done before I'd done martial arts um so I was kind of prepared but it is it is great fun and getting exercise as well, which is a big part of having a maintaining a healthy lifestyle, which is quite important when you've got so much work to do to stay active. And I, I in terms of other societies, I don't do many of just chilling out. Yeah, yeah, which I think it's very important actually when you've got so much work. Um, yeah. yeah so what is your um what's your favorite part of the course so for example is there like a particular module that you really enjoy i quite enjoyed digital electronics and the digital electronics practicals which comes across sometimes as quite controversial because i don't <laughs> think a lot of people like those practicals um but doing physics at a level it kind of linked into that so physics and computer science my two favorite two favorite a levels and them sort of merging together into digital electronics was was really fun. I quite enjoy the hardware side of things. Um, and I think that's what I kind of want to progress into. Great. And if, on the other side of things, is there anything you actually haven't enjoyed that much or maybe uh, a module or course you've just found really challenging? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I didn't do further maths at A-level, which did kind of set me back a bit. They obviously, let me in so it's not the end of the world if you don't do further maths but um the maths course was harder for me than i think it was for a few other people um so that just took a lot of extra time and focus but i think it, it should have gone all right in the end but that was definitely the hardest thing for me because i was sort of starting on the back foot and did that mean you had a bit more work to do perhaps compared to people who'd done maths and further maths well, I had the same amount of work to do, but I think it might have taken me a bit yeah. longer just to grasp the concepts. Yeah. Um, okay. And so do you also have supervisions with your college tutors? Yeah, so supervisions are through the, made through the college. Um, it's a bit different for me as well, because at, for computer science at Cambridge, there's a sort of group of colleges uh, which all have the same director of studies. So I have supervisions with people from other colleges as well, which have the same same guy as the director of studies. Right. So does that mean that you get to meet quite a lot of people from outside your college? Yeah, I think there's a group of maybe 30 of us, um, which is a lot compared to other colleges where there are three or four people, um, mm. which is really good. I get a mixture of supervision partners. I get to meet different people and it's, it's really fun just meeting everyone. Yeah, and so what is a supervision like? Because being in such a, a, a small group can perhaps seem quite intimidating to some people if they're used to being in a class of, of 20 or 30. So how have you found it? Yeah, it was, in, it was intimidating at first. And they say interviews are meant to mimic mm -hmm. supervisions in a way. But there's, it, the ratio is the other way around. Instead of like one supervisor, and two students it's two interviewees and one person so it's not exactly the same but it is a, a conversation i think as long as you embrace it use the opportunity to ask questions 
and find out what you don't understand it's a great learning opportunity like you have basically a one-to-one -one with someone who knows the answer to all your questions most of the time so just ask them and is they they're good and do you think your um directors of study are quite supportive if there's something you find difficult or if you've got a particularly high workload one week um if there's something you find difficult that he will definitely like answer your questions and you can say I'm, I'm struggling with this and he'll listen and try and figure out what the problem is so we have DOS meetings at the start and end of every term which is sort of like a recap how did you think it went is there anything you need help with um, and that's really useful um, yeah I yeah it's all right what was the other part of your question sorry I uh, so for example if you had like a particularly high workload at one point and maybe you weren't able to focus as much time on your supervision work um do you get support is there support available yeah i think if you don't have time to finish your supervision work it's not really gonna be the end of the world i mean as long as you hand in something i don't think there'll be a big a big issue but your supervision work does go towards your predicted grades and stuff so you do always need to kind of try your best if you have a high workload, I don't actually think there's much your director of studies could do um, in terms of making it go away. But you do, as long as you just keep keep working on it, keep sane by speaking to people, don't work all the time, but just try and keep on top of it, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, so one last question. Um, thinking about after Cambridge, uh, do you want to go into something specifically related to computer science and have you found there's quite a lot of opportunities to get work experience and stuff like that? Yeah I think right now I definitely want to go into something to do with computer science. In a few years that could be different. Um, right now it is definitely what I want to do. In terms of opportunities, yes there are so many. We have careers fairs specifically for computer science, arranged by the computer labs. We have careers fairs organized by the university for STEM subjects. There's a lot of companies that will reach out to you. Um, I personally am in the middle of a 12-week a internship just now with a company in London and that's an amazing experience um, just to get in there, actual, actually do software development, seeing what it's like and hopefully learning that I can take back into next year. Um, with my studies so, so what is, it what, is a great opportunity what is it exactly you're doing with the internship 